Hi, and welcome back to this second hour of this Tuesday edition of Focal Point on the American Family Radio Talk Network, AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name, congenial, convivial, and amiable. As always, great to have you in the conversation today. Let's get to some content in this half hour before we bring Jan Morgan in at the bottom of the hour to talk about what you and I are uh, unfortunately all too familiar with by now as the these gross abuses of power by the federal government. You know, I've got a piece. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to have time probably to work through it today by James Toronto, one of my favorite writers, favorite thinkers at Wall Street Journal. I read his best of the web thing every single day. He's a very gifted writer. He's a very bright guy. Uh, and he's not a not really a social conservative, but he's just very bright. In fact, he was the one I talked with you about the fact that this Kermit Gosnell thing shook him to the roots. He's pro-choice, pro-abortion, but this thing has rattled his cage. And he wrote a lengthy nine-page column where he admitted that he knows that his pro-choice position is illogical and irrational. And he's one of the most analytical writers I've ever read. He will he will dissect the argument of somebody and just pull it to pieces, carve it up. And he realizes if I do that to myself, my pro-abortion stance is completely illogical because I believe what science tells me that life begins at conception. And that means that any point where you draw a line and says it's okay to kill this thing, it's completely arbitrary because it's a human being. It's a human life from the moment of conception. So any place along the continuum from there to natural death that you would say it's okay to terminate that life, that's just going to be purely arbitrary. And so he admits he's still for abortion. He wants to protect that practice, but it's illogical, and he admits it. Anyway, he's a really bright guy. And he's got a very long piece called A Crisis of Authority. And uh, he, he says here that democracy itself is in peril right now. Now, this guy's not given to hyperbole. And when he's really serious about some issue, he thinks there's a real genuine threat there. He normally has some fluff stuff at the end of his column, headlines that are kind of funny and can be interpreted in more than one way and stuff like that. I've even contributed some of those headlines myself because I'm a kind of a, I, I read thousands of headlines every day and some of them just kind of grab you as kind of humorous or could be taken in a way that obviously the headline writer did not intend. So I come across one of those. I'll send it in to James Toronto and he's used quite a few of them. Anyway, when, when he is writing something who's just dead serious, uh, he won't include that entire section. When he wrote the column after the Newtown tragedy, no no funny stuff, nothing at the end, just a sober column beginning to end. When um, I'm trying to remember what the other one uh, that he wrote about. There was another one that was like, oh, yeah, the Gosnell thing. When he wrote that nine-page column about the way Gosnell had shaken his convictions. Again, no funny stuff at the end, just straight, uh, sober kind of reflection. And he's got the same thing yesterday talking about all of these scandals that are centered in the Obama administration. And he said, look, what we've got here is democracy itself is in peril because the administrative state, by which he means the Obama administration, has lost the consent of the governed. He says this, the IRS scandal was a subversion of democracy on a massive scale, a subversion of of democracy on a massive scale. And this is a guy, ladies and gentlemen, who is not given to exaggeration and to hyperbole. You know, he was the one last Friday was talking about the IRS going after these Tea Party groups. And he said in his column last Friday, look, this raises questions about the legitimacy of the 2012 election. It had that kind of potential impact. It could have made a difference in the election results in 2012. And my first blush was, well, that's kind of an exaggeration, but it's not. When you look at the scale, 500 of these conservative groups, groups that support marriage, like National Organization for Marriage, uh, James Dobson, Focus on the Family, American Family Association, we have been audited within the last uh, two years. You look at the suppression of the First Amendment right of not only freedom of religion, but freedom of speech and freedom of the press, it's pretty sobering. 
And that's what he's talking about here. This, was, this is a subversion of democracy on a massive scale. The most fearsome and coercive arm of the administrative state embarked on a systematic effort to suppress citizen dissent against the party in power. Now, what does that sound like to you? You know what that sounds like to me? It sounds like the Soviet Union. It sounds like China. You know, some of you may not remember this, but when the Soviet Union was still in business, they had a thing called Pravda. That was their kind of press arm. And TASS was their press agency. And Pravda was their ostensibly objective news site, but you knew it was nothing but, but propaganda from the first word of the first article to the last period on the last page. It was just propaganda coming from the party in power. And that's what James Toronto says we've got going on right here. The use of the IRS to suppress citizen dissent against the party in power. He quotes, uh, refers to Thomas Friedman, is famous for musing that he wishes America could be China for a day. It turns out we have been China for a while. He goes on, the current crisis of authority very much includes the news media, which in significant measure have abdicated their guiding principles of impartiality, objectivity, and sometimes even accuracy. In other words, he's saying what you and I have said, that the media has been completely in the tank for Barack Obama. Liberal media bias, he says, is an old complaint, but the Obama presidency has given it a new and dangerous form. Never has the prevailing bias of the media been so closely aligned with the ideological aims and political interests of the party in power. To a large extent, they have functioned for the past few years as if they were under state control. In other words, just like Pravda was under the old USSR, simply an arm, a propaganda arm of uh, the regime. That's why I refer to them as ministers of propaganda. The AP is associated propaganda, not the associated press. Now, here, uh, Toronto goes on. As we wrote on Friday, this will be a scandal like Watergate if it turns out that the IRS was acting under orders from Barack Obama or Valerie Jarrett. Otherwise, he's saying in his worldview, not in mine, but in his, this doesn't rise to the level of Watergate, does in Bob Schieffer's mind, but not in James Toronto's. But if the White House's conduct turns out to be unimpeachable, in other words, you don't really have grounds for impeachment, then it is something far worse a sign that government itself has become a threat to the Constitution. And then I want to skip down to the uh, end. Uh, he, he talks here about a crisis of authority that we have here. Who's really in charge, the government or the people? He says this, that crisis has been building for decades, seems to be reaching a culmination now and will be resolved, we know not how, except that we expect the process to be convulsive. What if we're wrong? What if the country collectively shrugs, loses interest in politics, and goes on with life? Then we really will be like China or worse. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a call to us. We've got to be alert. We've got to make our voices heard. We've got to be watchmen on the wall. Back in two.